I'm Ryan Milliken from Hardway Performance, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. I'm Demetri Miller with No Zone Diesel. This is Anthony Range from XDP. This is Jaron Holder from Holder Down Performance. Corey Willis from PPI. I'm Drew with DJ Precision Machine. I'm Pinky. And you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. The Diesel Podcast. You're listening to The Diesel Podcast. The Diesel Podcast. The one and only Diesel Podcast. Well, Ryan, glad to have you back on the podcast. We've got some big news to announce today. It's good to be back, and yes, it is some big news. I'm I'm pretty excited. <laughs> We're pretty excited too. You know, for all of our fans out there, have been listening for, gosh, I don't I don't even know how many episodes we're up to, but for a while, is uh, known Ryan a long time, knows a ton about the diesel industry, travels all over. He's gonna be co-hosting the podcast with me, and I'm <laughs> pumped, man. We're gonna have some fun with it. Yeah, dude, absolutely. So this is how I see it, Pat. Is that I am your eyes and ears on the ground. So, like, I'll go do all these events and talk to other manufacturers, talk to the racers, talk to uh, people who distribute, sell, you know, make, create, go fast, all that good stuff. And then I can just download that right into the podcast. And we can keep <laughs> all the listeners kind of up uh, up to date on the newest and greatest things coming out from different companies, the events they should probably hit in their area, and, and that kind of stuff. And then general, general just... BSing about baseball and and uh, men's fashion, high high end men's fashion. Can we do that? <laughs> Is that doable? <laughs> we do whatever we want on these things, but you're right. And the diesel parts in the industry, it's moving really quick. It is, yes. Oh, like week to week, there's new stuff coming out, and it's tough to stay on top of all of it, right? And get the word out to people. So, well, absolutely, and it seems like the events are growing by number for sure. So, I mean, guaranteed, um, there's an event for each listener that's within an hour that they can go check out, and and there's always some do's and don'ts about every event: where to stay, where's the after party, um, you know, is there Uber available so I don't get a DUI, that kind of a thing. So. There's always uh, there's always some uh, different finer points to each thing they can do. So hopefully I can inject some long gray bearded wisdom into these young podcast listeners. <laughs> yeah, they're fun, man. It's 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 one of those you know one of these things where you know we can talk to the the guy driving the truck, the owner of the company, the person who designed the part the person who's hosting the event and you can just get right to the source and it makes it so much fun, you know, as an enthusiast and, you know, we love diesel trucks and, and what they can do to be able to bring that to tens of hundreds of thousands of people who listen to these. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and I guess what I'm hoping I get out of this whole podcast thing with you, Pat, is that, you know, I listen to quite a few podcasts. They kind of, I, since I drive to all the events, podcasts, I, I rarely even listen to music anymore. It used to be comedy, um, and I was like, it kind of gave me something to listen to, and occasionally it's a book, like on Audible, but now it's like podcasts, like Joe Rogan Experience and um, Hardcore History, and, and man, they, they make the miles fly by. So I'm, I'm hoping there's some diesel enthusiasts out there um, that are going to like to listen to these on their way to work, um, get get some info, some intel. That way they can jump on social media, be ahead of the game. Um, but one thing that would be really great is if the listeners get on our Facebook page and get on the YouTube and leave some comments about some stuff they want us to talk about or some info they'd like, You know, whether it's a company profile or a guest to bring on. I think that would probably be the most helpful because, I mean, we know a lot of people between you and I, so sometimes it's a little hard to, to know exactly who people want to hear from and, and what they want to hear about. That's Now, that's a really good point, and, and there's there's so many parts to the diesel community that sometimes, you know, we can overlook them. You know, we might have our favorite truck or favorite trucks or year range or something, but doesn't mean that you know, a, an older platform or a different platform isn't doing some really cool things. And we love to hear from people loved, you know, there's something new going on with the seven, three or the six O or, you know, did you see the, the quarter mile pass this truck just had, you should get the guy on. So yeah, we definitely love the feedback and, and hearing from people and, and, uh, you know, just trying to bring F four Dodge GM, bring it all together. <laughs> you know, well, at the end of the day, we're all enthusiasts. I enjoy each camp. Um, you know, Camp Ford, Camp Chevy. If you've ever been to like a, um, a PPL sled pole, 
Uh, a lot of times Denver's announcing it, <clears throat> and Denver will be like, how many Ford people do I got up there? And you hear, like, them whooping and, wha- you know, hollering. And then how many Chevrolet people? And it's like during the, the Pro Mod cl- class that has, like, um, you know, Van Hazley and, you know, Rock Hard Ram and all these things. And it's like, you're kind of thinking to yourself, it's just a Ford body. They all have a Cummins in it. <laughs> but they still, they align themselves to uh, to the body of the truck. Now, granted, there are a few guys out there pulling, like Kyle Michael actually does have a really dope Duramax engine in that uh, LML or LMM uh, body of his. But, uh, but yeah, most of the guys have a pretty similar recipe. But, uh, but yeah, they people like to... To kind of show off, you know, my Ford better better than coming than stroking or something like that. I don't know. I see shirts. <laughs> Many rednecks out there. <laughs> well, the thing too is like on the street. What do you see? I mean, it's pretty much everything. I mean, I can't say I see one more than the other. You know, here or or even in my travels, you just you know, there's so many Ford trucks out there. They sell them. They're used all over the place. And then you got the guys who love Duramaxes and the GM platform and and the Ram and the Cummins and all that stuff. And there's millions of fans of each right absolutely and sometimes it comes down to regional um you know like uh since i you know obviously do uh shows in canada all of north america basically um you know you may find that oh hey out west you know the pacific northwest there's a few more duramaxes or there's a better duramax following up there and you know in the southeast there's a better ford following and what's funny is you can dig down into talking to some of the older shops and the people who lived around the areas and it may be the fact that the plant was there, you know, where they built the Dodge truck, and you could get a green sheet. And so everybody bought a Dodge diesel truck because it's the best deal they could get on a truck. Or, like, for the sake of, like, the Southeast, that, like, all the DOT guys had contracts with Ford. Um, and then, you know, these trucks ran as DOT. These people got good at fixing them, or, you know, maybe they were they flipped one and or just made it their own personal trucks. And so, the, like, the proliferation of... Um, diesel as, you know, what is popular where, a lot of times has something to do with the OE um, or a large government entity buying a lot of forestry vehicles or something like that, and then they get dumped back out on the market. Because I know when I was in high school, I could not afford a $100,000 diesel truck, which I don't know if you saw that, but holy cow, F450, Platinum, um, Limited, 100,000 real American dollars. <laughs> so, I mean, what's your payment on that? Even if you stretch it out to like a six-year payment, that's that's bananas. That's a, you know, a good mortgage on like a half a million dollar home. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, no, I th- that's where the secondary market, I think, comes in and why we don't have, you know, you still see trucks that might be five, ten years old. There's still new parts for them. There's still things being done because you can get into something with, you know, for less money. Um, and then have the, the funds to put into it. I was talking about that with, uh, Jaron Holder a few times, you know, and, and six O's and, and how they've progressed and have leapt, you know, just jumped forward, I guess, so much in performance and more people have them now. I mean, let's, I, I'm not going to try and discount the, you know, like SMB has the intake out like the day that truck launches and, you know, tuning comes out shortly afterwards. I mean, but granted, we still don't really have tuning for L5P. Like, it's coming. Um, but, you know, there's there are some new trucks that there's just nothing to do except for wheels, tires, steps, tonneau cover. And that's a big, huge, booming market. I, I was actually just at um, a, uh, a golf outing for a major uh, distributor for parts like that. And you would just be blown away about the square footage that they have dedicated just to WeatherTech format. <laughs> I mean, that's just bananas, uh, how much of that stuff sells. Uh, but uh, the secondary market, as far as the performance end, as far as my experience, and I think a lot of the, the enthusiasts out there, that's where we all live. Uh, you know, we're all kind of, uh, if you talk to Dennis Perry and talk about his 7.3 um, six position chip, he's still shipping just as many today as he was 10 years ago. And uh, it's just bananas that a truck that, you know, came out so so long ago is still very popular to modify very popular to have as a tow rig or, or anything like that um you know the six o's come on very strong you mentioned he does a lot of six o stuff um but like i said the, the trucks are getting to a certain year range where um people in their younger part of life where they're not as affluent and they don't want to go buy a brand brand new truck um or you know balling on a budget i guess is how you want to put it 
they, they're doing performance modifications, and performance modifications are affordable these days, and you can turn up a diesel and make them fast and very, very easily. I, you know, I think that's the allure to it, that you can have a five or 600 horsepower vehicle without breaking the bank and without having to get into the bottom end of them. So uh, that's kind of unique to the diesel experience, I think, and uh, and why people are so clickish and why you find, you know, your Ford fans and your Cummins fans and your Chevrolet fans, you know. Oh, that's how it started for me and probably tons of other people is you have a truck that you can use, throw stuff in the bed, haul something, but then throw on a seven eight hundred dollar tuner or more, you know, depending on on what you pick, and go have some fun with it, and you know, invite your buddies over, do it in the driveway, and put on intake exhaust or you know just whatever you want to do. Yeah, I just spent a little time with my good buddy Jesse Rohr from MBRP. <laughs> And they're developing a new exhaust for the Raptor. And I know this is gas, not diesel, but I think this is just truck ownership in general. But for the longest time, he had SUVs. Um, and uh, he he used to have a 6.7 Ford and loved the truck, got out of that truck, got into uh, a couple of uh, kind of crossover uh, SUV type things. Some of them are pretty fast and had a lot of power, actually. Uh, but now he's back in a truck uh, into the Raptor. I'm like, hey, man, it's like, did you just buy this because of MBRP or – he goes, dude, I missed having a truck so much. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, dude, I love driving a truck. Now, I think some people just like, like you said, have the ability just to throw stuff in the bed. Uh, hopefully your friends don't call you to tow their boats all the time like uh, mine do. But, I mean, at least as long as I can go on the boat, I'm, I'm happy. But, uh, yeah, dude, like that's uh, – I guess that's the way of it is, is truck guys are truck guys, you know, and you may get away from them for a little while, but you always, always want to have a truck in that driveway. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's gonna, it's really gonna be exciting, you know what, uh, what we're able to do, you know, with the podcast and and uh, having you on board. Looking forward to it. There's so many things like you mentioned earlier. Like you're all over North America, from you know northern Alberta to Florida, and everywhere in between. So it's it, it's cool to to hear. You know, like I see on social media, like this company will have a new product and it's there on an engine stand or transmission stand or you know all these different things that you're seeing right when everyone else is and you know we might not be able to travel you know a thousand miles or 1500 miles you know to something um or guys can't you know get the time off work to do it but they can hear about it while they're driving or maybe to you work. do want to travel to an event you just don't know if it's kind of stuck or not you know? like, <laughs> <laughs> like i don't want to drive you know 300 miles and go there and it's just like a bummer time you know there's nobody there and it's not fun and there's no trucks to watch so you know uh I, I certainly get that way. Like, I like going to a lot of brew festivals and things like that. You hate driving all the way into the city and showing up, and there's, like, four people there, that kind of a thing. So, you know, for everybody's hobby or whatever, you definitely want to have some sort of uh, uh, guide to where you, where you should be and what you should bring and all that good stuff. We're we're definitely pumped, excited to have you on. And uh, you'd be the eyes and ears, you know, for all the fans out there that are, you know, listening and and following us on social media and wanting about the new products and the new new innovations that are happening. They're happening really fast. Yeah, you bet. I mean, drop a comment, uh, you know, down below this podcast. And uh, if you just want to drop your year make model to your truck and say, what should I do first? You know, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll give you a shout out on the, on the podcast and try to really engage with uh, the people who are listening to this. And uh, like I said, uh, with what I do with traveling, but, Patrick, I you know with what you do in the in the retail market and uh, in your upbringing and manufacturing as well, I mean I think you're a world of knowledge for what products are important to put on your truck that'll bring up fuel economy, horsepower, torque, all that kind of stuff, and not really tear it up um, to where you can enjoy it to the fullest. Not that this is going to be a buyer's guide, but we can make it. Part <laughs> of it. We appreciate that, man. Look forward to uh, to some new episodes coming up here. Right on, brother. <laughs>